All right. Thank you very much, you guys. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Martha McCallum back at Fox News headquarters here in New York. After last night's barn burner debate in Wisconsin, a lot uh, to dig into as we get a closer look at some of these GOP hopefuls from last night. Take a look at this and some of the breakout moments that they had. Watch. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, 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 whoa. is a That's hoax. Just ridiculous. Oh, the climate this change is agenda is a hoax. I've had enough already tonight of a guy who sounds like ChatGPT standing up here. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. This is exactly why Margaret Thatcher said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. I think the American people deserve to know whether everyone on this stage agrees that I kept my oath to the Constitution that day. Mike, Mike did his duty. I got no beef with him. But here's the thing. Is this <laughs> what we're going to be focusing on? Ukraine is not a priority for the United States of America. You are choosing a murder over, over a pro-American country. You have no Let foreign me... policy experience, and it shows. And you know what? The, it the shows. Foreign policy... Whoa, so you get the idea. Uh, let's kick things off with Kaylee McEnany, former White House press secretary and co-host of Outnumber. Kaylee, great to, ha great to see you. Thank you, Mother. Uh, I'm happy you're here to kind of, you know, it, having been sitting there, it's good for me to actually look back at some of what was said last night and kind of slow it down and take a look at, at, uh, at what, what made impressions on people. This focus group this morning that I know you saw on America's Newsroom was very interesting. I want to play a little bit of this and get your thoughts out of that. Let's watch. I think Vivek's on a little bit of thin ice, even with me. Um, I, at, at the onset, I'm looking for someone that can win the general. And I think he might have alienated a few people last night, just his abrasiveness. I was all about Vivek, but you know what? After watching the debate, I do have to agree with some other uh, members on the panel. I think the strongest performer in terms of who will do well in the general election, who will do well with the most Republicans, is actually Ron DeSantis. Very interesting. Uh, what was your take on who stood out and who might be able to pick up some more support. First, I just want to say what a phenomenal debate. You and Brett did a wonderful job. Oh, um, and as a voter, it was just refreshing to be able to watch a debate about the issues, and that is what we got last night. Um, who was most behooved by the debate? I think Ron DeSantis, just um, you know, reaching out to some conservatives I know across the nation, many of whom are Trump supporters and remain Trump supporters. But I said, you know, who was on the stage? Who do you like? Ron DeSantis was the takeaway. They loved the fact, as one 22-year-old in that focus group said, that the work was done for Ron DeSantis before he walked into the room. Mm -hmm. He has perhaps the best conservative record of any governor in the nation, although I would say Glenn Youngkin is also in that category. He showed that. He didn't get involved in the phrase. Phrase. I think the phrase helped him because it might have knocked some people off the edges of the stage. It might be a smaller stage, but he wasn't in the phrase. Uh, phrase. And he was able to level punches against not Trump, but the ultimate opponent, which is Joe Biden. He also showed a more personal touch, which was one of the critiques of Ron DeSantis, which I think will help him. Yeah, I, I, I want to ask you about that. Um, but, but just to on the Vivek issue, because he was getting a lot of attention going in. Yes. His numbers were going up. He was, you know, front and center with, with Ron DeSantis based on the polling last night. But I think it's interesting that some of those voters said that they thought that he went too far, that he was abrasive. And that's exactly what I was hearing. You know, the Wall Street Journal said that in some ways he sounded like a young man in too much of a hurry. Mm -hmm. And I think an example of that is by saying everyone was bought and paid for. I think it's hard to make the argument that someone who took on Disney, some would say to his own peril, Ron DeSantis is bought and paid for. Also, he seems to be trying to mimic the style of President Trump. And if there's one thing I know, you can never out Trump Trump. There is one Donald Trump. He is beloved. Mm -hmm. And if his ultimate goal is to win the GOP nomination, you've got to get beyond President Trump. But I don't see how you do that if you're Vivek. So Obviously, one of the things that Ron DeSantis was hoping to do last night, based on observing and what he said, was to try to connect with people, because the criticism against him is that he doesn't connect with people, that he doesn't seem relaxed and, you know, emotional. Here's some efforts that he made at doing that last night. Watch. One of the most impactful moments of my life was when I heard the heartbeat of my oldest daughter uh, in my wife's womb and then saw the sonograms of all three of my kids. I know a lady in Florida named Penny. She survived multiple abortion attempts. She was left discarded in a pan. Fortunately, her grandmother saved her and brought her to a different hospital. We're better than what the Democrats are selling. 
How do you think he did? I think that was blunting the biggest criticism against Ron DeSantis, which is you're not connecting with voters. Um, elections are about people. They're not about politicians. And to actually hear the names of people in a succinct way, to see their stories, to hear their stories from a politician was powerful. It's one thing that former President Trump really excels at when he does these off the record stops. I, I know he went to a Dairy Queen and, you know, he says, what the heck's a blizzard and has this just viral moment. He's very good at this retail politics. Um, and to, to succeed in a GOP primary, you've got to be good at that. And to make this about people was a huge win for Ron DeSantis. You know, but, but I think there's still a question about whether or not he is really making that personal connection, mm -hmm. where people feel like they know him and they like him. I know he is very well-liked in Florida. But crossing, you know, it's one thing to sort of say, I'm going to tell this story and I'm going to tell that story. But do you think, based on what you're hearing from people, that he had a breakthrough in terms of, oh, you know, that's who he is. I really saw his heart last night. Do you think? That's the million-dollar question. I mean, to have a breakthrough, you have to stop and the hemorrhaging in the polls where there is a 40% right. gap between you and President Trump. I don't think this reversed the numbers in any dramatic way. Did he make some gains? Absolutely he did. But I think it's about winnowing the field. He's going to get more time as these debates progress because the field will get smaller and smaller. So the longer he can stay, the longer he can rack up points. Perhaps he can creep up on Trump, but I would just note Trump's lead, no one in the history of modern politics has ever lost with a lead that big. So in order to win, you got to defy history. Yeah, or something very big has to change in the whole dynamic, in the world, in the election. Um, let, let's watch this from Nikki Haley, because I'm also hearing a lot of people say that this resonated with them. Watch this. Can't we all agree that we should ban late-term abortions? Can't we all agree that we should encourage adoptions? Can't we all agree that doctors and nurses who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them? Can't we all agree that contraception should be available? And can't we all agree that we are not going to put a woman in jail or give her the death penalty if she gets an abortion? Let's treat this like, the, like a respectful issue that it is and humanize the situation and stop demonizing the situation. So obviously, suburban women voters, who I should point out, have different views on abortion. They're not a monolith by any means, but they're a very important part of the vote. Do you think she made ground with them last night? Look, at a general election, um, that argument may go somewhere. I don't know of a single person on that stage that wants the death penalty for a woman, a vulnerable woman who decides to have an abortion. No one in the party believes that. I think she went too far, especially when the Des Moines Register poll says 60 percent of Iowa caucus goers agree with the fetal heartbeat legislation like what Ron DeSantis signed and other governors like Glenn Young. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Kaylee, thank you. I could, I could go on with you for the rest of the hour, but um, it's great to have you here. Thank, thank you very you. much, Kaylee McEnany. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.